Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Trauma Recovery University. I'm your host, Athena Moberg, and my incredible co-host, Bobby Parrish, is with me right here in the green room. And tonight's topic is when you, as a survivor of abuse, are still being abused as an adult, either by your abuser or those who enabled your abuse. Quite the long topic name, but this is a very familiar topic and a hot topic to anyone who is a survivor of abuse. So I really want to welcome you, especially if you are tuning in on a podcast platform such as iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, or even iHeartRadio. If you are watching us on Roku TV, we want to give you a very special shout out and thank you for all of your five-star reviews. We have like 19 of them now or something, I think. 19 and we're averaged at four and a half stars. So I just want to thank you personally. Bobby and I are so grateful that you choose to spend this hour of your week with us. We want to give you as a thank you for being one of our loyal listeners, viewers, subscribers, or just an awesome survivor. We want to give you complimentary access to our downloadable resource for tonight's episode. Now, tonight's episode is when our abuser or abusers continue to abuse us into adulthood. So you'll find that by going to traumarecoveryuniversity.com and click on the tab that says Downloadables. You'll receive immediate access to this resource and you'll also get an email from us. It's a personal email that we actually composed. And if you get it more than one time, we don't want you to feel like we're spamming you. We actually wrote that in a heartfelt way so that you'd receive it from us. But it is programmed to be sent every single time you sign up. So um, we just appreciate you guys and we're going to dive right into tonight's topic. And I want to give a very special aloha to baby girl who is tuning in live. And I have a feeling that we're going to have Matthew tuning in live tonight and a few other familiar faces that are usually here weekly. So um, without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to our amazing co-host, Bobby Parrish. And she is going to give us all kinds of public service announcements and um, updates on our anthology and our virtual event in August, live event in September, and our submissions that we're receiving for next year's anthology. So um, this is an interactive broadcast. We are monitoring the hashtag no more shame. Tweet out your questions and or even just say hi. You can use no more shame, the hashtag no more shame, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we always monitor it and we try to respond in a timely manner. So um, I guess that's it for me. Take it away, Bobby. Hi, everybody. We're so honored that you're here and you're with us for this hour of your week. We know your time is precious and we don't take that for granted. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about everything that's happening here around Trauma Recovery University. Um, we have, we are, as we speak, calling through all the submissions that we got for our, our second annual anthology that will come out in November. And we're also getting ready for No More Shame November, which is our month of advocacy and raising awareness um, for children who are abused and for adults who were abused as children. Uh, the anthology will be published right smack dab in the middle of No More Shame November. So watch out for that. Um, if you have not already, pop over to the website, Trump Recover University and sign up for our email newsletter so you get all the updates on everything that's happening. And we also have multiple other books that will be coming out this year. Athena has several. I have several. Uh, they're both they're, all of them are in process and should publish by the end of the year, and you don't want to miss out on any of them, I promise. Um, Trauma Recovery University is going to have a big launch at the end of summer um, because we're going to be start offering classes and seminars and webinars. So stay tuned for our virtual event that's going to happen in the mid to late August, which is going to be the official launch of um all sorts of new programming on Trauma Recovery University. So, and we haven't picked an exact time yet, but it'll be several days in um, August, and we'll have all sorts of speakers and information and um, new things to offer to you. So watch out for that. And, yes. and we want people to vote um, to to do reviews on iTunes. Ah, yes. Can you tell them about iTunes um, during our during our virtual event in, in August. I forgot to mention that. So 
Yes, yes. Um, because Trauma Recovery University episodes are being turned into podcasts as we speak uh, by magical little elves behind the scenes, and they will be Name uploaded. Harriet. Yes, Harriet is our magical, <laughs> our magic, um, and they will be uh, debuting on iTunes um, towards the end of August or the beginning of September, Dana. You know what? I don't have an exact date yet, but as soon okay. as I have an exact date, I'll be sure to make sure that I let everybody know. And I also want to give a very special aloha to Melissa. Melissa is tuning in live. Again, she just tweeted it out. Hey, Melissa. <laughs> um, and last thing is that we want to let you know that um, there is going to be a live event in Birmingham. She asked me, Alabama. and I'm going to screw the announcement up. It was so beautiful. No, you're not. <laughs> you're perfect. It is in Birmingham, and it's in September. So Yes, yes in September. So um, Athena will have some information out about that one uh, very yeah. soon. And then um, look out for more live events coming before the end of the year, hopefully in October and December. So again, stay tuned on Trauma Recovery University. Sign up for the email and we will make sure that you get notice um, and you'll get a crack at the tickets and a chance to come and see us, inter interact with us live. Um, I wish we could have a, a studio audience and, and do our shows live, but her and Maui, me and Dallas, not working quite yet. Um, not yet. You count, yes, not yet, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> unless you count my son and my dog. And, and my husband. Yes, Jim. And all the people that are on, like, I hope you, I don't know if you guys can see. Wait. Uh-huh, I can see. You can't see. Okay. So, well, there was, okay, so there was this guy on the roof over at the neighbor's house, and I thought he was going to fall off because it's so windy. He was installing solar panels or photovoltaic panels or something, and I was excited for him to be on our broadcast, but I was terrified that he was going to fall. So anyway. Yes, let's not have that live on our broadcast. That would be traumatizing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Speaking of which, this this broadcast could be very triggering, and if it is, we invite you and encourage you to practice excellent self-care in the way of contacting our amazing friends over at rain.org and bobby has the telephone number memorized 1-800-656 hope h-o-p-e yes yes All right. they have a chat feature on their website at rain.org r-a-i-n-n Dot org. They have a crisis chat feature there. So um, that's another good resource, especially if you're awesome. overseas. Hey, yes. Jack's with us. Aloha, Jack. And aloha, Simi, if you happen to be there. I know that last time I think that you both were here and so was your daughter. So if you all are joining us, we want to say aloha. We're so happy you're here. And um, Jack says he has another sanity sign. Um, I think I saw that come by. So uh, just wanted to invite you guys to tweet out using the hashtag no more shame and we will be monitoring that and checking that and responding to your tweets. So um, tonight's topic about our abusers and when we were being abused as children, whether that be sexually or there's probably a million different flavors of abuse that were going on at the time. Um, manipulation, physical abuse, verbal, emotional, financial perhaps. Um, there, there may have been, um, since a lot of times this stuff happens within families, there, there may have been at the time sort of a, like an unspoken rule about like don't you dare speak of that or else type of a type of a thing which is like you know manipulation and, and threatening and um, out of fear for your own safety or the safety of your you know siblings or whoever you might have been around you automatically obeyed and didn't say anything and then here you are fast forward 10 15 20 30 40 50 60 years later sometimes and you're speaking up for like the first time ever and you're actually daring to share and these people who either were your abusers or they were the people who were in your family that kept silent about your abuse, 
they have some opinions of their own or they withhold their love from you when you decide to share the truth or they threaten you or they excommunicate you from the family or they just continue um, either abusing you physically or they attempt to abuse you physically like we heard this morning on chat or there are many different ways that your abusers and their enablers could be abusing you into adulthood. So we're gonna unpack all of that tonight and we want to invite you again to practice excellent self-care. Press the pause button if this is triggering for you, if you're getting a dry mouth or sweaty palms or your breathing is shallow or if you're starting to have any type of um, physical manifestations of stress. So we care too much about you for you to feel that way. So please come back if you're triggered. And um, Bobby, I just want to start off maybe like we normally do and, you know, discuss some of the tweets that were sent this morning during our chat that is geared more towards our UK audience since it is at a, a time um, of day when the UK, our UK peeps can actually um, participate, which I forgot to say aloha to the people in the UK that are rock stars that are watching right now live and it's two in the morning. So, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> forgot that part. Um, but Bobby, yeah, I was just, as always, I'm, I'm touched and heartbroken at the same time and yet I'm encouraged. It's all this mishmash of feelings when I'm in these Twitter chats, um, in the, in the early morning, my time and talk about powerful, powerful, yeah. powerful community. You know, we had, this topic came to us, um, from someone in our community. And I think when it first came to us, um, there was the initial thought that maybe it wouldn't apply to a lot of people. Um, because when you're only talking about, you know, if my abuser who abused me physically or sexually in my childhood is sexually or physically abusing me now, we see some of that, but not a lot. But when you back it up and you say, no, is your abuser still in your life manipulating you? Um, arguing with you verbally and emotionally abusing you, coercion, um, gaslighting, all of those things, then the numbers are huge. Um, it's not uncommon to see that happen. And I think we don't realize that. Or it was interesting this morning, several people said, well, I didn't realize that was still going on. Or because it wasn't like what I experience as the childhood there was no sexual or physical component yeah exactly I'm not used to calling it abuse but it's abuse it um, is and abuse like we talked about last week Bobby abuse is any type of maltreatment that is unwelcome that's what abuse is so and when right and chances are high that um, especially when this happened within your family that there is some of that when you're an adult, especially when you decide to speak up. Um, or they've been doing it for years. This morning we talked about coercion and manipulation in order to keep you silent. So oftentimes the abuser wants to stay in contact with you. They don't want you to move far away. Um, you know, they want to be able to reach you on the phone. They follow your Facebook accounts. They follow you on Twitter because they want to continue to monitor you and make sure you're not speaking up. Um, financial issues too. I've seen a lot of that where families will give money to people who have been abused as children. They'll say, as long as you stay quiet, will continue to support you financially. Or as long as you stay close by. Yes. I've seen that, um, that happen. And, or I even had one of my family members when I, as you all know, if you've been watching the broadcast for any amount of time, you know that I live in Hawaii and it was the opening of Pandora's box when I got here because I was safe for the first time ever. I had one of my family members who was one of my abusers literally have like almost a nervous breakdown or a meltdown or like literally lose lose their mind over the fact that I was moving with ocean between us and they would call me on the phone regularly or text me or email me blow up my email blow up my text call me on the phone upset with me I can't just jump on the freeway and find you I can't just come see you I mean it was like this drama unfolding and I was like uh sorry like I like it here I'm not that's right back. you like that ocean being between you and them 
I, I do because guess what, guys? I'm healthy. I'm healthy for the first time in my life. I have healthy boundaries. I have healthy friendships, healthy relationships. I have healthy communication. My finances are healthy. Um, my body, for the most part, is pretty healthy. My mind isn't as healthy as I would like it to be, and that is a work in progress, which is why I'm in recovery. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just if you if you notice, it's good to spot, it's good to spot those things, you guys. If you have a family member that was either a one of your abusers or b one of your enablers, and you decide to move away, and because you got a job offer or whatever reason. And you see that they are literally like, but, 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 but I won't, I won't give you this and I won't give you that and fine, fine, move away. See what happens. You'll be back. Like if you like have that kind of thing going on, it's good to take a few steps back and go, okay, let me evaluate this relationship right now. Let's see what part they played in my abuse and if they are a cause of further abuse, if they're perpetuating this abuse, if they're continuing through manipulation or withholding love, like Bobby said, coercion, gaslighting, any of it, well, it can't be that bad. Like you wouldn't want to take that job. What are you going to do? You're going to keep your kids from, from their grandparents? What kind of a parent are you? You're going to keep your kids from getting having a relationship with their grandparents. Shame on you. Shame on you. I didn't raise you to be this type of a parent. What kind of a parent do you think you are? They'll use your kids. Oh my gosh! Well, your father is just—he's going to go to an early grave if he—if he doesn't—if he doesn't get to see you. I mean, how can you do this? How can right. you, how can you do this to your family? I mean, these are some messages that you could be getting from right. people, and right. we're here to tell you that you're in charge of your life, people. You're in charge of your recovery. You're in charge of your life. Your safety. And your health, whether that's mental, physical, emotional, financial, whatever, and the health and safety of your children, those are paramount. Those are the things that are the most important. And you can't have any of your family members choosing to get in the way of that and then you allowing it out of obedience or a fear of them withholding love or out of a people-pleasing mentality. you got to reach out to some pe some people in healthy communities such as myself and Bobby and the communities of people that we have set up um, for you to join. Just just message us, nomoreshameproject at gmail.com anytime and tell us you want to get plugged in to a healthy community if these types of things are happening. So you can go, does this sound right? They're saying I'm a bad parent because I want to have some healthy boundaries and and is that right? Or they're, they're telling me I have to come home every summer for three months. Is that right? They're, I have to stay at their house where there's no locks on any of the doors and they just barge in on me even when I'm naked and I just don't ever want to go there. I get a pit in my stomach whenever I have to go and I have to share a bathroom with people and they're always barging in when I'm taking a shower. And, and I, I just, it, Do I have to go home? Am I a bad daughter or son because I don't want to go there? Is that right? And we're all going to reflect back to you what we've gone through. You know, I mean, a lot of people that suffer from eating disorders, they go home, they go home for holiday, they go home for summer, and they're, they're, they're binging, they're purging, they're, they're back in their, their habits because it's so traumatizing and triggering for them to be back in the place where either they were abused or they're in the neighborhood. The smells are the same. It's just so difficult. There's so many layers, you guys. So, so, so many layers. Bobby, what are your comments on that? You know, I agree. And I think what I want everyone to really, really hear is that we understand that it's complicated. We understand that it's complex. And we understand that you can't go from being immersed in your family and surrounded by your family to having absolutely no contact overnight. And nor are we saying that that having no contact is the right thing to do. Somewhere in there is your decision about what's most healthy for you. It's a complex issue. It's a complicated issue. If there's money involved in financial support, you're going to have to find a way to get another source of income before you cut off that connection. There's all sorts of issues, and we really want to honor you and your recovery. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm going to say it's okay 
to put yourself consciously, to consciously choose to put yourself in an unhealthy situation. Um, but I am going to say, let's work on that. Let's take steps. Let's just start moving in a healthier direction. Um, but your recovery is your own. And we respect that and we honor that. I know that for many survivors, it's over a course of time that they can separate from their abuser and their enabler. And I really, I want to take a few minutes and define what that word enabler means because many of us are not used to the word enabler being used outside of the addictions arena. So let's take a look at that for a minute. And an enabler in an abusive situation is someone who knows the abuse is happening and they allow it to happen or they facilitate it happening. Um, for example, I had a client who was abused by his grandfather. When he went over to his grandparents' house and his grandfather would take him into the basement to sexually abuse him. His grandmother would get up, close the base, basement door, and go into the kitchen, which was about as far away from the basement door as she could get. That's an enabler. She knew what was happening, and she did what she needed to do to not let anyone else find out, and also that she would turn her back on her child. She would turn her back. That's an enabler. An enabler is someone who, let's look at some other examples so this makes sense. Um, when the, you know, the soccer coach um, wants to pull you aside and have a little personal chat with you um, and the assistant coach steps up, interacts with everyone, gets everyone else's attention and keeps them busy so they're not looking in the direction of where he's got you behind some tree. Okay, that's an enabler. Enablers are often just as invested, if not more so, in your being quiet and not speaking the truth than your abuser is. Because sometimes your abuser is the way they are because they're a narcissist, they're a sociopath, they're a psychopath. Those people lack empathy and they really sometimes don't care who you tell what because they are of certain mind that they can control what happens to them and who are you and what makes you think because you share that anyone's going to believe you. But it's the people who kind of have a conscience and are choosing to turn their back or facilitating the abuse, they're the ones who might be very fearful about word coming out because they don't want their reputation to be sullied and they certainly don't want anyone to know that this happened within their family. And so understand that as you try and separate from your family, if you try and separate, perhaps you're going to choose to stay in contact with your family, but set some really healthy boundaries. You don't have to be concerned just with your abuser. You need to be concerned with the enablers as well, because they are the ones who are going to push boundaries. They're going to push back. They're the ones who may be telling you what Athena said. Who do you think you are moving so far away from here? You know, your grandfather's going to be so upset. Well, yeah, because maybe you won't have another victim. Um, or that, you know, you're just going to get fired. What makes you think you can do that? You're going to end up back here anyway. And, you know, and your kids are going to see you fail. You'll and be back. That's right. You'll be back because nobody else is going to want you because we're the only ones that really love you. Um, all of that is going to come from both the enabler or the enablers. Maybe there was more than one. Um, and your abuser. Or perhaps it's just going to come from the enablers. So be aware. Think back. Um, put that into your perspective, into your realm of thinking. Who enabled the abuse to happen? And be mindful that they are just going to push almost as either just as hard or sometimes harder than your abuser is going to push back on you when you start to stand up for yourself or when they're doing everything they're doing, they're continuing the abuse just to keep you quiet. Um, 
so make sure to watch out for both and be aware of both of those people being active in your lives. Yes. And I wanted to add a little bit of something, if I could, to that, Bobby. Absolutely. Um, you and I have discussed this, but I had this like epiphany the other night about this, and I really just couldn't wait to share it tonight on this topic. So guys, girls, amazing beautifuls, rock stars, listen to me, listen to me, please, very, 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 very carefully, okay? The messages you had fed to you when you were little about you being powerless and unloved and they're the only ones that are ever going to love you, I cannot say this strongly enough, guys. When you start hearing messages similar to those messages in your adult life from other people, that is a huge red flag. Example, I was told when I was little that I had to look perfect and I had to be perfect and no one would love me and I had to act a certain way and do a certain thing if I knew what was good for me. And you know all the messages. You guys have seen all these episodes of us, so I won't, I won't bore you with those details. Ah, think about some relationships I was in with men. I was told by one of them, you're crazy just like your mother. You better stay because no one else is ever going to want you. You are used up. No one is going to want a young, teenage, single mother. You will never, ever, ever find anyone that will love you as much as I will love you. Another relationship that I was in, I was told that I was the problem, that they didn't have a problem. Even though they were uh, having a relationship on the internet with someone who was 14 years old and they were well into their 30s, pedophilia, uh, found that out, got out of that relationship, thank God. I, I nearly had a broken arm because of it, but, but I got out. But um, anytime someone says, I don't have a problem, you're the problem. Red flag. Another thing that I was, I was told, I was called names by certain people that I was involved in. Um, one of them called me a uh, white trash piece of shit. And sorry for the language. Um, I'm trying to think of other things, but if you, but I was called all kinds of names when I was little. Like I was called very, 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 very vulgar names um, when I was little by different abusers. I was called a whore. Um, I was just called a lazy ass. Um, you're just like your father. You're never going to amount to anything. You'll be lucky to even make it through high school. Um, I was told those types of things. And then those messages started showing up later on in life with other relationships. And I didn't realize that I was being abused. I didn't realize it was abuse, you guys. I didn't. I, I can kick myself all I want and say, I should have known, I should have known, I should have known. But bottom line is I shouldn't have known. How would I have ever known? I was raised to believe whatever was fed to me and I had better like it. Thank you for feeding me that bullshit. Can I please have some more? Thank you for telling me I'm worthless. Can I please have some more? Thank you for hitting me. Can I please have some more? Thank you for locking me outside with no food or water. Can I please have some more? I was not taught to stand up for myself or whatever. Or if I didn't just accept and receive what was given to me, there was hell to pay. The abuse got worse. Not only did the abuse get worse, but the abuse of other people in my household got worse. And that is when, ding, 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 trauma bonds are formed, which we're going to mention in today's one-page resource, thanks to our incredible content creator, Bobby Parrish. Bobby, will you comment on everything that I just said? Very much so. Uh, you know, the things that we heard as children, the lies that were told to us, um, first of all, you have to be aware of them. And I think some survivors, we grow up and we're not aware that perhaps the fact that you are not worth anything is a lie. Guess what? That's a lie. And that's a lie that your abuser and your, those, their enablers taught you in order to keep you under their thumb. That's manipulation. It's not true. Um, you have no power. There's nothing you can do. You'll never get away from me. I will always have control of you. 
That's a lie. But they tell it to you in order to keep control over you, keep you from speaking up, keep you from walking away. And once you realize that those are lies and you can call them lies, then you can be aware that when you hear them again as an adult, yeah, big red flag, you know, time to turn around and start walking in the other direction, way far away from whoever's telling you that as much as is possible. Um, I know sometimes we hear those voices in places where it might take a bit to transition. Maybe you have a boss that treats you like that, um, that says things like that to you. And if, you know, there's not a human resources department or someone to talk to, you've got to arrange the capacity to switch jobs. But please recognize those lies. Understand that they are lies and keep a lookout for them. Because when they show up, they are an invitation for you to turn around and go the other way. Uh, because you certainly have had enough of that to last a lifetime. No more. <laughs> And yes, we are going to talk about trauma bonds. Well, um, I want to. I want to just like mention really quick. I'm right in the middle of texting the best Stacy ever. Hey, ah! Stacy, congratulations! Yeah. You got married yeah. this weekend. Congratulations! Yay! So, okay, I wanted to give you guys a real practical example of what a trauma bond is like. Okay, and we're going to delve in deep. And Bobby and I are experts in all of these areas, even though we don't ever say we're experts. This is a particular area that we're kind of an expert in. So we're not tooting our own horns too loud and hurting ourselves as we pat ourselves on the back. We're just saying we're going to go into great content here. But I want to give you a very, 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 very real example played out of what a trauma bond is, okay? And Bobby, I want you to comment after this, and then you can pull up our one page. But um, so I, as you guys know, I grew up in a domestic violence environment, and it was horrifying. It was terrifying. There was always um, violence. There were weapons. It was, there was like drugs, alcohol, um, guns, knives, blood, things crashing, things being thrown, telephones being ripped out of the wall. Girlfriend Stacy is going to be able to uh, like completely uh, resonate with that. That a lot, all of that happened with her as well. But in the middle of this domestic violence, you guys. I didn't have siblings that I was close to or anything. I only had step siblings and we bonded, but not really at all. But my mom, I would watch her get beaten and bloodied and have wounds and bruises and, and she would be bleeding from whatever was going on. And I would run to her and I would want to help her. And I thought that we were on like a team together and that we were going to get out and it was us against the world. And yeah. And so we formed a very, 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 very strong trauma bond. And for me to break that bond and move to Maui and or put any distance or or try to just have healthy boundaries in my life with my family, um, specifically my mom, it's been very, very, very painful and exhausting because trauma bonds are nothing to to blink at or whatever that euphemism that I'm trying to find, you know, nothing to sneeze at or whatever. Um, there, when you like, there's a couple of different um, uh, sources of healing out there that you, you sign up for, and they cost like several, like twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. And you go to these um, week long retreats or workshops, and they don't allow you to go to the bathroom, and they don't allow you to do anything because because they want you to be stuck to them and, and they know the, if, you, if you walk away something bad's going to happen and you you're not allowed to eat and like they have it's like traumatizing to not be able to go to the restroom or make phone calls or like be talked about by other people and you start forming a trauma bond with these people that are in the workshop with you and you all of a sudden feel like you're healed you're peeling away the layers of the onion and that's a bunch of bs that's abuse is what it is and it's perpetuating and um pushing you more towards abuse and you already come from this environment of needing to um, be latched onto someone else because you were abused and that's why you're you're in the situation you're in to begin with. So anyway, trauma bonds. Bobby, what are your comments on that? I agree. There, the bond between either an abuser and their victim or sometimes it's between 
several abusers who are in the same situation. For example, um, a mother has two sons that she's abusing. The two boys can develop a trauma bond with one another, but they're very, very strong because they're life and death. Um, I am bonded to this person because I am dependent upon them for my very safety. Um, and it comes often, most often in situations where you're completely immersed in an abusive situation. Um, also is referred to as Stockholm Syndrome. I know I'm going to date myself here, but I don't know if any of you remember Patty Hearst. She was kidnapped by um, the, I think, SLA. Um, she was kidnapped and she was held at gunpoint for a long, long time. And eventually she began joining her kidnappers in crimes. And she was caught. She used the trauma bond in her trial as an excuse for what happened. She was not believed and she served prison time. That is an example. That is how, how much a trauma bond can contort our thinking. When you are in an, when you are immersed in an abusive situation where you feel like, and when you're children, you can definitely feel like your very life is at stake. That bond, it's fierce, very, very, very fierce. And having worked for 18 years in the trauma field, I can tell you that it can be very, 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 very hard to break a trauma bond. Um, either between, you don't typically want to break a trauma bond between two victims. Between the victim and the abuser, it, it's tough stuff. So that's why Athena and I both talk about, you know, if you're thinking about breaking off communication or setting some tough boundaries with your abuser, when you get that, no, I can't do this, this is wrong. Some of that very well may be a trauma bond. Give yourself some time, um, be gentle with yourself, be understanding, and know that that connection that you have with your abuser is not something to feel shame about. That was something that was cultivated by your abuser over a long period of time, and it's not gonna go away right away. Um, but still, you can still make forward progress, especially when you are supported and encouraged by a community. So again, like Athena said earlier, um, connect with one of us or, and we'll get you plugged in or reach out to the community around you if there is a group for survivors. Um, it's just, it's so powerful and so helpful um, to go through your recovery when you're supported uh, by people who know where you've been. So um, the trauma bond, we're going to talk about a little bit in the one sheet. And since we already talked about it, you'll know exactly what we mean. Um, Athena, is it okay if I go to sharing the one page? Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to um, just welcome everyone once again. If you're tuning in on a podcast platform such as iTunes or Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, or iHeartRadio, we want to let you know that this is a video broadcast and it's interactive using the hashtag no more shame. We're live on Mondays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, and we want to give you complimentary access to this downloadable one-page resource just for saying thank you for being a listener, viewer, subscriber, or just an awesome survivor. So I'm going to tell you how to do that right now. You're going to go to traumarecoveryuniversity.com. You're going to click on downloadables, and you'll receive access to this resource. And then you can also... Um, if you're watching on Roku TV, thank you so much, by the way, you guys, for all of the five-star reviews, um, you can um, go to nomoreshameproject.com and click on downloadables. Either way, we have our anthology. This community goes way back to January 2014, started by the OG Rachel Thompson, Rachel in the OC on Twitter. So I just want to um, welcome you and thank you. And um, go ahead and grab that one page resource. It is awesome. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into that right now. And then we have our contact information and ways you can contact us later on in the broadcast. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the one page. Again, they're available on our website. The reason that we put them together is for your information. So you have a quick resource, a quick um, 
a quick resource to healing information and education. So each one, we have one for each week for each episode. Like Athena said, they're on the website. Click on downloadables. I think we've got more than 50 now. So a wide variety of topics that we hope will help you um, when you need quick information. Whoops. That was not what I need. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. okay. Um, again, for many of us, our abuse did not stop when we reached adulthood. Perhaps the sexual abuse stopped. Perhaps physical abuse stopped. But the coercion, the gaslighting, the manipulation, the verbal abuse, the emotional abuse, they probably, in some form or another, continued, especially when your abuser is in your family. Um, and again, keep in mindful, keep mindful. Wow, my tongue is just tripping tonight. Keep mindful of You're your awesome neighbors. You're awesome in every way. You're awesome. <laughs> Don't even worry. For those enablers who are also um, going to be prone to continue to abuse you, manipulate you, coerce you. And in the second paragraph, again, Athena and I want to recognize that saying to you, you know, you need to just stop communicating with your abuser. What's the matter with you? Why in the world are you communicating with your abuser? Why do you have them still in your life? We're absolutely not going to say that. Um, it took me several years to get to the point where I cut one of my abusers out of my life. Um, and I had to set some serious boundaries with an enabler. It takes time. And we're not going to judge you. We're not going to shame you if you have made a choice to allow your abuser to stay in your life right now. Um, we would like to encourage you to move to a healthy position. But maybe right now, having your abuser in your life is what you see as a healthy choice. So. We're not here to judge. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're here to help support you as you make decisions for, as we say, healthy, informed trauma recovery. And then here we talk about it. This is the place where we talk about the trauma bond. A trauma bond between us and our abuser and or their enabler often develops as a result of years of abuse. Severing that bond can take years. And sometimes it can be dangerous. And I want to mention right here, People often assume that domestic violence means just between partners or spouses or boyfriend and girlfriend, but it's not. Domestic violence is any kind of abuse that is involves an interpersonal relationship, okay? So if your mother beats you in the home, that's domestic violence. Um, and domestic violence can be so dangerous and the most dangerous period of time for a victim in a domestic violence situation is when they attempt to leave or when they do leave. Um, as horrible as it is, we hear all the time on the news about um, someone who guns down their partner in the parking lot at their job. Or um, there was a horrible situation here in Dallas a couple years ago when a... Um, a man whose wife had left him went to her apartment on like Christmas Eve, dressed up like Santa, killed them all. So if you are contemplating leaving a, a domestic violence situation, even when it involves your abuser from your childhood, so perhaps it's your father, perhaps it's your mother, perhaps it's your grandfather, and you've been deeply enmeshed in that abuse for years, when you decide it's time to go, please, 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 please take measures for your safety. This morning in chat, we had multiple people talk about abusers stalking them into their adulthood, about having to move away, change names, completely everything in order to make a break from their abuser. So don't think that this doesn't happen except in husbands, wives, you know, two wives, two husbands, whatever your partner situation is, it is not limited to that. It also applies to people who are leaving an abusive situation, no matter what kind of interpersonal relationship you have. So please 
be safe. Um, make a safety plan, contact the domestic violence shelter in your area. They can help you to set up a safety plan. Sometimes they can help you to get away. Um, please take advantage of those resources. You are so important. You are worth it. And we really want to make sure that it is not a tragic situation for you. You know, this morning we also had multiple people talk about how they are choosing to remain in a relationship with their abuser. And I know I saw some tweets later about people who felt that they were judged really harshly if they remain in a relationship with their abuser. You know what? Things are hard. Things are complicated. It's not that easy. Throwing out a judgment doesn't help anyone. Um, maybe from our perspective, it's not the best thing. But what's important is for that person to reach any conclusions or to be rooted in their understanding of what's happening on their own. And if you want support, if you want help, um, that's what we're here for. So if you feel like you're stuck, you want to get away, you want to set some boundaries, but you can't do it on your own, let us know and reach out to us. We're here to help. Um, so here's some tips to cope with continued abuse from your abuser and or their enablers. First of all, remember this is your recovery. No one has the right con to condemn or judge your decisions. Your best interest, and I put this in there because I think this is important, along with the best interest of your dependent children is what matters. I think one of the few places one of the very, very few places in trauma recovery where I will tell a victim that they need to cut ties with their abuser, no questions asked, here and now, that's it, is when there are dependent children involved who can be abused by that abuser. So if you have children that your abuser has access to, this is the time to cut off contact or to keep your children away from the abuser and you go ahead, continue to have phone conversations, um, you know, go over for the birthday parties, whatever you need to do. But please don't allow your abuser to have access to your children, whether they're your biological children, your stepchildren, it doesn't matter. Um, you as an adult are responsible for those dependent children. So please um, do what's necessary to take care of them and to keep them safe. That's the only time that I've ever told anyone what I think they need to do. If you want help sorting out your feelings and making a decision on how to handle the continued abuse, don't hesitate to ask for professional help like counseling or coaching or therapy. Um, if you don't want to get professional help but you still want some support, um, a wall to bounce something off of, then join one of our Facebook groups. They're secret, they're private, nobody can see them but the members, and we'll help you get plugged in so you can talk about what do I do? I know this isn't what I want, but I don't know how to get from here to what I want. The next one, set as many healthy boundaries as you can to limit the abuser, the enabler's capacity to harm you, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Okay, if that means that, um, you know, mom, from now on, I'm only going to be able to talk to you on the phone. Um, or I only want to talk to you about these subjects. I don't want you to bring up grandpa or Uncle Joe anymore. Remaining in a relationship with them but setting good, healthy boundaries is a good choice. Um, if you do have to interact with your family, including the abusers and enablers, it's okay to take a safe, supportive person with you when you need to come in direct contact with them. Maybe you have to go to a funeral. Maybe it's a family reunion and you want to see some of your family that you haven't seen in a long time. You just don't want to interact with your abusers or enablers. Take someone with you um, who can be a source of support and could, who can maybe even be a buffer 
between you and those people so they cannot harm you the way that they might want to. Can I say a little Absolutely. bit of something about yes, that one, Bobby? Yes, Real yes, absolutely. Quick? Thank yes. you. Um, so I wanted to, regarding this taking a safe person, guys, it's not just in person, okay? Let's say you have, uh, let's say your family participates in weekly or monthly um, FaceTime or Skype with your family. and some of the people that are on the other end of the Skype or the FaceTime could be either your abuser, one of your abusers, or your family, one of your family members that was an enabler that knew the abuse was going on and they looked the other opposite way, allowed it to happen. People that are really encouraging the sweeping under the rug, the elephants in the middle of the room, shush, 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 don't, don't say anything, don't air your dirty laundry. Anybody that was involved in your abuse, if they're on the other side of that Skype or that FaceTime, I'm going to tell you something right now, okay? You are worth protecting. You are worth not re-victimizing yourself every week or every month or however often on holidays, the obligatory Mother's Day, Father's Day, Flag Day, Earth Day, whatever it is, FaceTime or Skype. You are worth protecting. If you need to attend for whatever reason, because you choose to, these, uh, these events, if you will, that are digital or virtual, it is okay, it is 1,000% okay for you to ask someone that is a safe person to be there with you. I can't tell you how powerful it is when my husband is sitting next to me on FaceTime or on Skype. He's right there. Guess what? I'm not all alone anymore. Guess what? You can't manipulate me. Guess what? You can't control me. You can't coerce me. You can't get me to feel bad or listen to everything or turn my play my role that I've always played. You know why? Because I have someone next to me that's strong and safe, and they are the buffer. They are the game changer. If you have anyone that you can call to be over to sit next to you. Even Oh, my friend stopped by. Whatever you need to do, don't attend these virtual events alone. It's just as bad as showing up on Christmas with Uncle Freddy, who used to touch you by yourself. Don't think that you need to do it. You are worth protecting. I will step down from my soapbox now. Thank you very much. Well, you know, and, and that's important to point out that one of the reasons that works so well is because usually our families, our dysfunctional families, are all about appearance. And they do not want to do or say something in front of your spouse or someone else that would make them look bad. And they're not foolish enough to realize they, I think I said it wrong. They realize when they look bad, for the most part, especially oh, the, yeah. especially the might, enablers. Oh, yeah, and they might say something to you like, why do you have to have that person there with you when we Skype? Why can't we just Skype just the two of us? Why do you have to have someone there? Why can't you just, why can't you just call me on your own? Why, do you, why, is there ever, why does there ever have to be somebody else involved? Why can't we just do one on one like we used to? Oh, <laughs> I'm stirred up. <laughs> you got you got me fired up over here. And you know what? That's that's a really good segue into this next one to practice excellent self care before, during, and after contact with your abuser and your enablers. Um, you you need to realize that there's a possibility that if you, you know, you go to a big holiday thing, you're interacting with your abuser, you're interacting with enablers, you're doing your best to stay focused, not let them push your buttons. The next day you might feel terrible. And it's just that emotional hangover of having spent an entire day with probably your fists clenched or your teeth clenched and um, you know having to be just completely on edge your body and your mind might need a day just to rest and that's okay 
So don't feel bad if you need to take the next day just to hang out on the sofa and watch silly movies and, um, you know, not do much of anything else. If you decide to sever contact with your abuser and enabler, it's okay to proceed slowly rather than cut off contact all at once. It's absolutely okay. And, you know, I don't want to, um, I don't want to, eliminate the possibility that your abuser could choose to change or that your abuser could be um, repentant or your abuser could admit what they did wrong, ask for forgiveness, and then the relationship would be good. So I'm not meaning to put out there that every situation with, with an abuser is going to be awful for the rest of your life. This is only, the situation is about when you have an abuser who is continuing to abuse you into adulthood. Um, maybe they did apologize, but they haven't changed their behavior. So in that instance, it's okay to set boundaries, it's okay to limit contact, um, and it's okay to move your life in a healthier di direction. And again, make sure you and your loved one's safety is a priority when you cut off contact. Abusers can be dangerous. And I want to make sure that you know that we have two excellent videos and one page is about healthy boundaries and coping with family relationships. If you go to YouTube, you'll be able to find them. If you get on Roku TV, and then the one pages are on, on our website at traumauniversity.com downloadables. Yay! Yay! I want to um, give a very, very, very special aloha to Yellow Nero, Jack and Simi's daughter. And she's been tuning in tonight for the very first time live. Not the first time. She's been here before. But, like, I never got to tweet with her before. So I'm just very, very excited. And I've been retweeting everybody. So um, <laughs> thanks for listening to me when I went on my little uh, – Soapbox, guys. I'm very, 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 very passionate about healthy boundaries and learning how to protect ourselves because we deserve it and we were never protected as children because we were not allowed to be protected. And the lasting effects of that type of ongoing stuff is very, 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 very real. So um, if you hear me sort of go off on those tangents where my voice gets very, very, very serious, it's not that I'm like wanting to be a scary person. I'm very scary. But I, I want you to know. <laughs> I, I want you guys to know how much I love you and how fierce rawr, yeah. that I am. That's the right word, is fierce. Yes. I am how fiercely we fierce. feel about protecting all of you. Oh, my gosh. Mama bear. Rawr. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um. Let's take a look at our other, here, let's take a look. The new pretty, the new pretties? Yes, Athena and her wonderful graphic design skills. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, how bum, I bum, channel, I, I use graphic design to channel my anxiety sometimes, guys. Oh. I pour myself into these. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is how you can join into the community that um, we have worked on building and fostering over the last year. Um, we have three events every week, um, two Twitter chats, and then this Google Hangout on Monday evening. And um, you can interact with us anytime, though, 24-7, 365 with the no more shame hashtag on Twitter. On Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time or 6 p.m. in the UK, you can join us for our first Twitter chat of the week. That is with the hashtag CSAQT. And then, um, where's our, oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. She, she just she made these pretty things, and I, I have to find my way through them now. Monday evenings, we're here. 
<laughs> Sorry, Bobby. No, no, I wanted to fit it all and like organize it. And <laughs> no, you did it beautifully. Um, this is just the first time I've used it, so I'm sorry. I'm fumbling my way through here. Um, Monday nights is six o'clock Pacific time, or if you're up late in the UK, that's two o'clock Tuesday morning. And then our second Twitter chat is Tuesday evenings. This is the original one that we started back in January 2014. The hashtag is sex abuse chat. And it's at 6 p.m. Pacific time and Wednesday at 2 a.m. You can find all of our episodes on YouTube or Roku TV um, immediately after we end this broadcast. Um, our assistant, Harriet, will take the video and do fancy schmancy wonderful things to it. And then she'll upload it to YouTube. And from there, it will upload over to Roku TV. So it usually doesn't take too long. But if you look for this immediately after a live broadcast, it might not be there. So um, ask us about joining one of the Facebook groups. Find us on Facebook, friend us, send us a message. Um, we would love to hear from you. And with that, I'm going to pop over to our contact information. Awesome. Let's do that. While you're that up, I just want to, I know we haven't done the Rockstar Tweet of the Week in a while, but if we were doing the Rockstar Tweet of the Week, which we might bring back if you guys really want us to bring back Rockstar Tweet of the Week, then let me know. But if we had a Rockstar Tweet of the Week, it would go to... Yellow Nero, who says, sorry is, is uh, worth nothing unless they stop making the mistake. Talking about if you're being abused, you guys, and they say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that you're, I'm doing these things. I'm so sorry I did those things to you. I, I apologize. But you know what? They're not really sorry unless they change their ways. This is wisdom at its finest, you guys, right here. Wisdom yes. is strong in this one. The wisdom <laughs> is strong the in this The force is strong with her. Yes. She is wise beyond her years. She, she has, has great parents. parents. She has excellent parents. Ooh, I thought of Jack when I made this new graphic. Oh. Jack Lumen. Luminous Jack. <laughs> Okay, here's how to come into contact with us. And look, there's a picture of Athena and I together. Yay! I thought of, I thought of Jack. That was the picture that he loved. And he said, these two are on your side. <laughs> that was for you, Jack. Uh, you can email us. I'm at bobbylparish at gmail.com. Athena is at athenamoberg.com. Together, we are at the No More Shame Project at email. Gmail. <laughs> gmail.com. <laughs> um, on Twitter, I am Truth is Hers. Athena is at Athena Moberg, and then Trauma Recovery University is at Trauma Recovery U. Connect with us on Facebook. Athena has the Athena Moberg fan page. I have Bobby Parrish Coaching and Consulting. Athena's personal page is Dawn Athena Moberg, and mine is Bobby Parrish. And we would love to have you friend us. Um, we're here to interact with you. Most of what we publish on our Facebook. Facebook is in the public format anyway, um, so you'll be able to see it and get an idea for what it is that we we publish on Facebook. And then we have Trauma Recovery University has its own page. Um, yes, we would love for you guys to like our page. You need, we would love for you to like our pages. If you, if you believe in what we're doing and you like what we're doing, we would love for you to show that by giving us a thumbs up. That would be amazing. Or... Um, you can thumbs up this video on YouTube and leave a comment below just letting us know that you were here. And on our Roku TV channel, we love all these amazing reviews you guys are leaving. So um, just give us honest reviews. We're not asking for you to like something or give us a five-star review if it wasn't five-star worthy and if you didn't like it. But if you liked this video, then we want you to share it with all of your friends. And the more you guys, um, we're going to be transitioning into iTunes and we're going to we're going to be telling you guys, saying, hey, if you like this episode, leave a review. Um, the more social proof we have that what we're doing is worthy and, and is um, enjoyed by you. And effective. And effective for your healthy, informed trauma recovery, then that is going to enable us to provide more complementary resources to you and continue to do this for free because um, – we're going to be launching the paid version of what it is that we're doing here with Trauma Recovery University this fall. 
fall semester, Trauma Recovery University. Be on the lookout for that starting September 1st. We're going to tell you guys more about that. If you're already here and you're already a part of our community, um, then then that does not apply to you because you will be grandfathered in for free forever and you'll receive discounts and stuff because you're already here with us. But um, after November 1st, or after September 1st, pardon me, um, there, there's going to be a charge and, and we would love for you to tell a million people before September 1st so that they never, ever, ever have to pay because people deserve to receive um, affordable care. So um, there's my little plug for what it is that we're doing. But it's also important because as we try to gain sponsors um, for our broadcasts, for our podcasts, they need to see that we have a decent following before they want to invest in being a sponsor. And again, having sponsors allows us to provide more information for free. So that's why we ask you to like and subscribe and let other people know that uh, we're here so they can like and subscribe too. Yeah. And that's it. I have no more information. <laughs> you have so much, Bobby. Come on. <laughs> I know you do. I talked to you off the air in the green room and you are filled with way more information. Come on. No. Okay. We, we want to be respectful of your time and we want to thank you for, um, for showing up your, your energy, not to sound woo woo, but like your energy and your, like your interaction, your tweets. I mean, it just makes it, it makes, it makes everything better and it just strengthens our community. Um, I want to, I want to plug next week's topic really quick because I have a very special particular someone that I want to receive this message. I have been ministering to a suicide survivor via, via private message for quite some time now. Um, she's still in crisis. She's still considering suicide and um, she doesn't feel like uh, life is worth living because the trauma and sexual abuse that she incurred during her childhood at the hands of her abusers is so shame generating and fear generating um, that she just doesn't want, she just wants to disappear. She wants to um, just disappear and, and not be here. And I know that if you are watching this broadcast at one moment or another in your life, you have had suicidal thoughts. You've thought, I must not be worth anything. I must, if I was just used as someone's tool of manipulation or abuse, then I must not be worth anything. And if that's you, if you have ever, ever, ever had suicidal thoughts, then we want you to be on the lookout for our very next broadcast, our next episode which deals with the topic of suicide. And get, get the word out. Um, there's a hashtag that goes on on Sundays called SPSM, hashtag Sam Peter Sam Mary. And that is suicide prevention through social media. And they have a chat every Sunday. And Bobby and I have been attending. I didn't attend yesterday. I had a really rough Father's Day with my dad passing. But um, we're, we're going to be talking about suicide. That's our next week's topic. It's going to be our topic during chat on Monday, CSAQT, Monday night, hashtag no more shame, Tuesday, hashtag sex abuse chat. And please, 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 if your life has been touched by suicide through a friend, family member, loved one, neighbor, guy at the gas station, whatever, get the word out that we're going to be talking out loud and openly and taking questions and everything on the topic of suicide. Hashtag no more shame next Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And then of course the other chats that I had mentioned. Um, suicide's a really, really, really big one, guys. You could save a life if you get the word out about this. You literally could save a life. So um, I know that we don't have any more information, Bobby, and we need to be mindful and respectful of everybody's time, but I just had to say that. So, Yeah, this is important. This will probably be one of the most important chats that we have done this year um, because it's it's immediately life-saving. So please do turn in. Tune in. Turn in. <laughs> Tune in. And um, like Athena said, we're going to talk openly. There's a myth out there that when you talk about suicide, um, it makes people more likely to commit suicide and that's not true it's a lie um, it's a so, big 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 fat lie yes we're going to talk about it openly we're going to tweet openly um i'm going to be telling the spsm peeps to if they want to maybe tell people that that's going to be the topic we're going to be talking about that'd be awesome um 
we just we love you guys too much to see you take your own life and the loved ones that you have around you, other people that are survivors, other people that are going through um, this really difficult stuff. We want to know that they are not alone. So um, get the word out, and we love you guys. Thank you for tuning for tuning in. <laughs> you got me saying turning. Sorry <laughs> for turning in. <laughs> Thank you for turning in the tuning in this week to another episode of Trauma Recovery University where Bobby Parrish and myself, Athena Moberg, are dedicated to providing you with everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. And we look forward to seeing you next week on Trauma Recovery University. Aloha. Bye, everybody. Good evening.